Hello everyone! In this video tutorial I will guide you through the steps of creating a production schedule using Schedule Pro. I'll start with simple concepts and incrementally introduce more advanced features and capabilities of the tool. If you don't have Schedule Pro installed in your PC, please make sure to download the full functional demo version through our website www.intelligent.com as you can see on my screen so that you can create your own schedules as we go along. Also, make sure to visit the literature page where you can download the full user's manual and various papers that discuss the tool. Moreover, it's important to mention that Schedule Pro is chipped with six domain-specific examples that describe the advanced capabilities of the tool. This tutorial corresponds to the example presented in Chapter 4 of the Schedule Pro manual and makes use of a simplified version of a batch recipe for the production of a saline solution that was created using Super Pro Designer. Let's have a quick look at that process. This simplified recipe includes three procedures. The first is the preparation of a solution in a mixing tank. In this procedure, various components are added to the tank, they are thoroughly mixed, transferred to the storage tank, and finally the tank is cleaned in place. The second procedure is the storage in a storage tank. Here the solution from the mixing tank is received and then the filler is fed. Cleaning is done once the storage tank is empty. Finally, through the third procedure, the bags are filled using a filling machine and then the filler is cleaned after filling. It's possible to export models created in Super Pro Designer into Schedule Pro. However, if you don't have Super Pro Designer or are only concerned with a process schedule, you can create recipes directly in Schedule Pro as well. In this video, I'll create the recipes directly in Schedule Pro. Let's now go ahead and open Schedule Pro. To open Schedule Pro, select the program shortcut on the desktop or installation directory of the application. The program opens directly to the main working window. Recipes created in Schedule Pro make use of facilities under Resources. Recipes, facilities and resources should all be part of the same scheduling project. From a practical point of view, it is more convenient to declare the facility information first before the declaration of the recipes, especially if both are to be entered directly in Schedule Pro. The reason for that is that recipes make use of resources declared in the facility. The key data in Schedule Pro is mapped to corresponding nodes in the project tree shown on the left hand side of the main window. You can navigate the tree to find all the information you have entered in the project. The tree consists of four major data categories. These are recipes, materials, facilities, and production schedule. Let's begin the model by defining a facility. To do that, select the facilities branch of the tree and click on the Add New Facilities button in the Facilities pane on the right-hand side of the window. This brings up the New Facility dialog where we need to enter a name for our facility. In this example, let's call the facility Medical Solutions Plant. Besides the name, you can optionally provide some descriptive information. Let's now click OK to exit this dialog. Notice how the new facility now appears on the facilities list. Also, if you navigate to the facilities node in the Explorer tree, you'll also see your newly generated facility. If you select it and expand it to reveal its contents, you'll see eight different categories of resources. With the exception of equipment, the declaration of all other facility resources is optional. Let's go ahead and define the equipment for this example. As you may remember from the super profile that I showed at the beginning, we need to define four pieces of equipment for the recipe that we'll be creating. Three that will be used to carry out the main process and the fourth the CIP skit that will be used during cleaning. To define equipment, first select it from the Explorer tree, as I just did, and then click on the Add New Equipment button in the Equipment pane on the right side of the window. Through the dialog that pops up, we can define our equipment. 
the first piece of equipment that we need to define is the blending tank. We're going to call this MT1. Also, you can overwrite the type by typing blending tank instead of vessel. And finally, you can optionally provide a description of your equipment. Let's now click OK to exit this dialog. Notice that the newly defined equipment appears on the equipment list. In a similar manner, let's repeat the same process to add the remaining pieces of equipment. The second piece of equipment that we'll need to add for this example is a storage tank, which I'll call ST101. As for the type, we can change it from vessel to receiver tank. Furthermore, we'll need to add a filler, which we can call filler1. And as for type, we can change it to filler. Finally, we can add our CIP skid. If, after creation, you wish to view or edit the properties of the declared equipment, select the equipment from the list and click on the Edit Equipment button on the toolbar of the pane. Through this dialog, you can edit some properties of the equipment and you can add some equipment-specific information. Now that we've added the main resources for this example, we can proceed to define the recipe. A recipe in Schedule Pro is a template or description of how to make one batch of something. To add recipes, first select its node on the Explorer tree, and then click on the Create New Recipe button in the Recipes panel in the right side window. In this dialog that pops up, you can enter the name of the recipe. For this example, we'll call the recipe One Liter Bag Recipe. Also, you can optionally add some descriptive information through this dialog, but let's leave it as it is for now. Finally, let's click on the OK button to add the recipe to the project. And it also appears on the Explorer tree under the Recipes node. If, after creating a recipe, you would like to edit some of its properties, you can select it from the Recipes list and then click on the Edit Properties button. Through this dialog, you can change the recipe's properties to your convenience. To add batch size and reference material, for example, select the Size tab. Through the Reference Material section, you can specify your reference material. Saline solution for this example. Furthermore, through the Nominal Size section, you can specify your batch size. For this recipe, let's specify a batch size of 10,000 liters. We can now click OK to save these changes. Notice now that the recipe has been updated with the information that we just added. The next step in creating this recipe is to define its unit procedures. A unit procedure in Schedule Pro is defined as a distinct manufacturing step that utilizes at least one primary piece of equipment for its entire duration. For example, a mixing procedure might utilize a blending tank. Unit procedures are further divided into operations that describe distinct sub-steps in a unit procedure. Operations may require other resources such as labor, materials, utilities, auxiliary equipment, and stuff. To add procedures, first select the recipe in the Explorer tree to bring up the recipes view which is displayed to the right of the Explorer tree. From this view, select the Add New Procedure button to add a procedure. Notice that a default name, P1, is generated for this procedure. Let's accept it and let's also add a short description of our processing step, which we can do by bringing up the procedure's properties dialog. In this dialog, you can add a description through the descriptions box. Let's describe this first procedure as prepare solution. 
Let's now click OK to exit the dialog. Notice that the description now appears on the procedures list. Let's repeat the same steps to add the remaining two procedures. Again, let's provide a description for each of the procedures, which we can do by bringing up the properties dialog. For procedure P2, we can describe it as store, and procedure P3, we can describe it as fill. Unit procedures also appear in the explorer tree under its corresponding recipe. Notice here the three procedures that we added. Note that by default, a section node appears in the tree. At this point, it is safe to ignore it. Now that we've added the unit procedures, the next step is to declare the main equipment that will execute the procedures. You can do that through the procedures list or by double clicking on the procedure in the explorer tree. From this dialog, select the main equipment pull tab to add the equipment. For this first procedure, P1, select the blending tank, MT1, in the medical solution plant and click on the Add button to bring it to the equipment pool. At this point, it is important to mention that if you have defined multiple facilities, you first have to select the facility containing the equipment you want to use from the facilities list. Another important thing to mention is the concept of an equipment pool. As you can notice, you can add multiple pieces of equipment to the equipment pool that can carry out the same procedure. Having defined a multiple equipment pool means that the program will select the first available equipment to carry out the procedure, starting with the first item in the list. This can have an impact on the way you run your batches, but I'll discuss that in detail at a later stage. In a similar manner, let's assign storage tank ST101 to procedure P2, and filler 1 to procedure P3. In the explorer tree, notice that the procedures display the procedure name, the procedure description, and also the equipment that is used to carry out that procedure. Now that we have finished defining the procedures of the recipe, we can proceed to define the operations. Let's begin with P1. As you can see, when you select a procedure, its operation sequence is displayed on the right side of the window. Furthermore, every procedure is automatically assigned a new operation, called Operation 1. Let's begin by editing this operation, which we can do by selecting it and clicking on the Edit Operation button. In this dialog that pops up, there are several tabs that are worth mentioning. Through the General tab, we can change the name of the operation and other descriptive information. Through the Durations tab, we can specify how long an operation takes. Through the Scheduling tab, we can specify when an operation takes place in relation to the batch and its process steps. The next tab is the Auxiliary Equipment tab. Here we can declare auxiliary equipment which is used by an operation in addition to the main equipment. An example of this is a CIP skid which is required for a cleaning operation which I'll discuss at a later stage. Furthermore, through the remaining tabs you can add different resources as described by the title of the tabs. In this tutorial we will ignore consumption of materials and labor associated with the execution of operations. Instead, we will concentrate on scheduling related issues. Let's now go back to the general tab to define this operation. First, Let's change the default name to Charge Water. Next, let's visit the Durations tab to specify the duration. For this operation, let's specify a duration of 30 minutes. Finally, let's visit the Scheduling tab where you'll see that this operation coincides with the batch start as it is the first operation in the batch. Let's click OK to exit this dialog. Notice that the operation's name has been updated and the duration corresponds to the one that we specified. This concludes part one of this tutorial. Please make sure to watch part two 
where I'll finalize this schedule per project. Thank you very much for your attention.